I don't have a problem of what I do. I will do it again if I have to for another child. Some days I just felt kind of normal. Some days I just felt bleh. Um, it would be hard to explain to people how, like, I'm absent one day and then I come back with bandages on my arms. I was limited a lot. I had, I couldn't do sports, and I really wanted to do sports. Some days I just didn't want to do anything, but if I had a joint pain, you know, those were the bad days because usually I would get them in my leg and I'd be limping that day, or in my arms, and you know, taking Tylenol at school and all that, telling my mom, you know, you're hoping something's not wrong. But, yeah. Do you have one arm better than the other? Yeah, this one. You like the hand? Yes, this is what I call Old Faithful. Um, the conventions right now in our country are that children who are not having many problems from sickle cell are not referred. And so it tends to be that older children are referred who are medically um, more compromised. I see. If they're medically more compromised, it would seem that they would also have a higher risk of the transplant. Yeah. Um, not going very well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's a double-edged sword because the best time to do it is when they're young and when they're healthy <laughs> because okay, yes. they get through the transplant the easiest, they recover the quickest, they have less complications, um, they've had less infections in their life, so their risk of infection is lower. Right. Um, and they just do better overall. Um, but transplant in general, if successful, and there are no serious complications, mm -hmm. um, cures sickle cell disease, or cures the patient of you know, right. sickle cell disease. If you say, well, there are risks associated with transplant, and I don't want to take them in every child, I just want to take right. them in a child I'm sure isn't going to do well, you know, then you're looking at waiting until that child right. gets sick. And, um, and that may or may not be the case. Right, right. My medical life and my life were kind of split to me. I think of it as my two worlds, so I would get rid of one of the worlds that I've wanted to get rid of for so long. So I weighed the ups and downs, you know, the pros and cons list. You know, it could be fatal. Uh, you were going through this a lot of pain. Um, a lot of stress is going to be put on. But you just have to really think about, you know, when you leave and you come out, you're going to be brand new. You're going to have a lot of brand new everything. You're going to transform completely. She's been in the tunnel for 13 years and there's a big light at the end of it. And that's exactly what this transplant gave her, that light. It gave her a second chance, opportunity to live again just to live life to the fullest. I would tell any parent, take a leap of faith. There's something that will cure their disease or even help to reduce the suffering that they go through. So I think any parent should not think twice about it. Did, did you hear her say she'd do it herself if she were licensed? So you're too experienced. <laughs> but I couldn't work with this. Why not? I don't know. I think because kids don't like it when that person comes to draw so your blood. Yeah. I don't want to be the person that people don't look forward to see. 